Welcome to Suburban On Air, Mike Cohen with you, and we go to beautiful Israel right now with a very, very, very special guest. I'm honored to have Mr. Shabti Shavit, who was the head of the uh, Israeli Mossad, and he's written a fascinating book. This is the book right here. I've had a chance to read it cover to cover. In fact, I think I've read it more than once already. It's called Head of the Mossad in Pursuit of a Safe and Secure Israel. Uh, Mr. Shavit, thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to be with you. Terrific. Well, first of all, um, I couldn't put this book down. And uh, you were the head of the Mossad from 1989 to 1996. For viewers who are watching this, not all of whom are Jewish, of course, can you explain what is the Mossad? Well, the uh, full name of the full title of the Mossad is the Institute for Intelligence and Special Operations. Now, by saying special opera operations, it's, it means that any thing that uh, the government of Israel decides to, uh, to do, and uh, there is no other entity in the government or in the Israeli administration that uh, can do it, it is assigned to the Mossad. And, and I know that uh, I've watched many, many movies about, about the Mossad uh, when they, uh, the one that was recently, it was a new one on Netflix uh, where, they, where they got Adolf Eichmann and brought him to Israel to stand trial. Of course, the, the, the most recent Sasha Byron Cohen movie, which uh, he was serious and he played Ellie Cohen, the spy for the Mossad. Yeah. So there's been a lot of, so that's why the name is, is, is pe people know the name of the Mossad. It always yes. comes up on, on Homeland or any of these shows that we watch. Uh, the most recent one, I, I, and, and the most recent one is Tehran, which I just watched on Apple TV. Can I, do you watch any of these shows? Have you watched any of them? <laughs> Look, um, when I'm being asked by, uh, uh, mainly by Israelis, if I read the uh, um, uh, books that uh, have been written of, of the Mossad, or if I watch uh, uh, television with a series or uh, movies about uh, the Mossad, I, I uh, usually I, my answer is that I don't do it. And if I do it, it's very rarely. And the reason why is because real life to me is more interesting than the movies. And you lived it yourself. And, 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 and in, in, in my real life, suspense was greater than uh, you can see in the movies. I, I bet. Uh, so so you're, you're, I guess you answered my question. You have not watched the series Homeland, is that correct? No, no. Okay, and, and you, you have not watched the series that just came out, Tehran. You have not watched that one either. Uh, Te Tehran, I see, I saw it uh, on an Israeli um, uh, uh, program before it uh, came on this uh, Netflix. Okay, yeah, it's on, it's on Apple TV. Well, that brings yeah. me to my next question. I guess I'll ask you that question now, is that in the book, you talk about the fact that you actually lived in, in Iran. There was actually a time when you could live in Iran and Iran was not enemies with Israel. That's right. Uh, Iran once, those days, Iran was almost an uh, ally to Israel. And the, uh, uh, it was during the days of the Iranian Shah, back in the... Uh, 60s, 70s, um, till the uh, till the um, revolution of uh, which took place on 1979. Till then, the relationship between uh, Israel and Iran were very, very good, and they uh, they, they they go back to uh, Israeli strategy, which was. Um, defined and designed by the uh, finding fa father, founding father of Israel, Ben Gurion, when he became the uh, prime minister, and he was, uh, and this strategy said that uh, we should pursue. I mean, I mean, the the state of Israel should pursue to uh, establish relationship with 
Arab and Muslim countries uh, which are situated on the outer circle of uh, the state of Israel, because Israel is circled with with the uh, Arab states, uh, most of them unfortunately are still um, uh, considered to be enemies. So, uh, based on this, uh, based on this uh, design or thinking of uh, David Ben Gurion, we uh, pursue a relationship with Iran on one part and with Ethiopia on another, on, on, on in the South, in Africa, and uh, with Turkey. So Turkey is, is, is a Muslim country, not exactly an Arab country, and Iran is a Muslim, a Muslim country and, and not an Arab country. So uh, during all those years, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we had a, a very close relations with the Iranians and we also with the Turks. Interesting. Uh, your, uh, your situation in the book is you talk about Iran, you talk about a lot of very interesting people. Uh, you were head of the Mossad uh, when uh, Yitzhak Rabin got assassinated um, and um, the anniversary was recently. That must be a hard thing to, to digest that that happened. And, and uh, I, I, hard, I find it hard to believe it happened. I met Yitzhak Rabin when I was in Israel uh, myself about almost two years before he died. Yeah, it was a very, it was a very hard event. Uh, maybe the, uh, the, the, the uh, biggest loss that I can uh, think of um, at least during my uh, tenure. Uh, and here I have to mention that uh, I was nominated uh, to the, uh, uh, to become the director of the Mossad by Yitzhak Shamir, who, who was the prime minister before Rabin. And it was those, uh, uh, those days that we had a, uh, a unified government of, uh, of both main parties, the right and the, uh, the labor and the and the could, and uh, um, it was since uh, eighty nine till uh, ninety two. Ninety two, we had elections. Rabin was elected to his second term, and uh, he, uh, he decided to uh, um, uh, that I uh, will stay on uh, during his uh, administration, which I did. And uh, yeah, after his assassination, I, I remained another six months with uh, Perez. And uh, so uh, all in all, I served with uh, three prime ministers. The uh, greatest loss, of course, was uh, the assassination of uh, Prime Minister Sabin, which was uh, the uh, first and only uh, uh, such an uh, event in the history of uh, the state of Israel and the uh, consequences of uh, that loss we uh, we sense even even today after 25 years uh, for sure uh, now also during that time uh, Rabin tried to make peace and Yasser Arafat was was hard to believe was actually you know a partner in peace what do you remember about Yasser Arafat well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yasser Arafat was a uh, was a Palestinian. Even though, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was born in in, in Egypt, but nevertheless, he, he was of a Palestinian family, and he uh, um, he was a sort of a meteor who uh, who um, succeeded to. Uh, to become the leader of uh, of the uh, um, national Palestinian movement uh, for uh, for a very long time, we uh, we've tried to deny the uh, existence of uh, of a national Palestinian movement, but uh, uh, he succeeded, 
and uh, he fought for uh, the independence of uh, 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 of the Palestinians, but uh, these two uh, national movements, the Israeli and the Palestinian, we fought and we still are fighting on the same piece of land. And this piece of land is uh, unfortunately uh, relative very small and it uh, it doesn't have a place for uh, for the two people so uh, uh, the only one the only one solution could be a sort of a, a two states solution which Arafat um, didn't accept even though for the sake of appearance, he, uh, he played the, uh, the political game and he was ready to sit and talk and uh, to negotiate, but uh, um, the, uh, the sheer truth is that uh, he never accepted the, the idea of, uh, of, of uh, an, a separate and independent Israeli state and an independent Palestinian state living and sharing the same territory. You also write about uh, the, uh, the Gulf War. Uh, I was actually in Israel a day before the first Gulf War started, Saddam Hussein. Can you tell me after all of that, uh, uh, the two Gulf Wars and Saddam Hussein ended up being captured and, and executed, uh, is the world better off with him gone or would, would Iraq be less of a danger if he was still alive? The, the the world is better is better off without uh, without Saddam Hussein because Saddam Hussein first of all he was a dictator um, and they, um, secondly he was a Sunni ruling over a majority of a Shiite uh, 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 Iraqis and being Sunni. Uh, he, he, he persecuted the, the uh, Shiites. In other words, the uh, objective situation in Iraq for many, for all these years was such that uh, uh, um, all the, all the, uh, all the effort uh, in order to build a, a, a country which will be uh, stable, unified, and a, uh, and a uh, positive uh, uh, member in the Middle East uh, could, not, could not succeed. And uh, Iraq was always a source of uh, instability and unpredictability of the, uh, of the regime. And uh, uh, the world today is, uh, is, is better than, than during uh, Saddam's saying uh, 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 life. What about Syria? I'm sure that when you were the head of the Mossad, there were probably many secret missions you can't tell us about regarding Syria. We know the one about Eli Cohen, uh, which was many, many, many years ago. But what about Syria? What threat do they pose to Israel? Because they've had a pretty good peace all these years. I went, to, when I was in Israel, I was amazed when I went to the Golan Heights and I literally could see Syria from where I was standing. Uh, for many years, Syria was the uh, number one, uh, uh, number one uh, enemy, a number one threat to Israel. Uh, but uh, since uh, since the, uh, uh, the last decade, uh, Syria has uh, has undergone um, a um, Domestic revolution, so to say, and uh, and and uh, uh, civil civil strife and civil and civil wars, and the uh, millions of Syrians uh, had to uh, immigrate uh, to run away and to immigrate to uh, Turkey and to uh, Europe, um, and. Uh, um, the uh, Syrian military uh, um, was, uh, for all practical purposes, uh, ruined. 
and Syria today uh, is, is really not independent in the sense that uh, they have a uh, big, very big deployment of, uh, of uh, Russian military uh, uh, people, uh, infantry, air force, intelligence. Uh, they have even their own uh, port in, in Syria. The Turks are uh, playing in, uh, in, in, in the territory, uh, especially against the, the Kurds in, in Syria. Iran is a major participant in, in uh, Syria today, and also Hezbollah. So Syria today is less of a, is less of a threat by far than it used to be in, in, uh, in past years. You, uh, you told me um, off air that uh, you, uh, of course, have been to Canada many times. Your wife has family in Montreal and, and, and elsewhere. Um, uh, when you were head of the Mossad, Canada has, of course, a spy agency that is not as uh, well known as the, as the Mossad called CSIS. Uh, what were your relations uh, with Canada and the Canadian governments at the time? Did they help uh, Israel? Uh, were they a good, uh, were they a collaborator at any time? Um, I, I can, uh, I can tell you um, ge very generally that uh, um, the relationship between the two services were uh, uh, very uh, correct and uh, positive and the, um, uh, and the um, uh, sharing of, uh, of intelligence and uh, and consultations and, and and research talks, intelligence research talk, all this was part of the uh, of the relationship. And by the way, let me tell you, it's not uh, necessarily uh, apply to uh, apply to um, to um, Canada, but there are cases where the um, foreign relationship between Israel and a given country, and at the same time, the relationship between the Israeli Mossad and, and the intelligence service of that country, um, they are not necessarily uh, entirely identical. There are cases where the uh, foreign relationship between the two states are lukewarm or, or, or any other description that you can use where the relationship between the two intelligence services are by far more developed and, uh, and better. Very interesting. I could, like, I could talk to you all day. I, I'm gonna recommend people get the book. I'm gonna explain in the, uh, the section on this video where they can get it. Uh, again, it's a great read. And I hope when the pandemic's over, uh, somehow, some way, you get a world tour, you come to Montreal, and we get to meet you in person as you talk about the book. So best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And, and, uh, and, and when you uh, intend to visit, uh, give me a call before. So, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, we'll mind, be, I wouldn't we'll mind having the former head of the Mossad uh, protect me as I walk around Israel. That would be pretty No, cool. I'm... Uh, I... <laughs> Today I am already retired for more than 20 years, but I'll be glad to have a cup of coffee with you. You got it. It's a deal. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking to you and all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you.